Hi and welcome back to my YouTube channel, The Random Access Memory of Anajan. And today I'm going to be talking about well E and or what is known as Euler's number. So fundamentally the definition of what E is is the limit as n tends to infinity, so as n gets really really big, of this quantity, which is 1 plus 1 over n, all to the power of n. But how can we work out E, rather than doing pure experimentation? By which case I mean, instead of us purely just trying out the case of n equals 100, n equals 1000, n equals this, n equals that. So how can we work out what the limit as n tends to infinity is of this value? Well, a nice way to do this is by using the binomial expansion. Using the binomial expansion, we end up with that e is equal to the limit as n tends to infinity of the sum from k equals 0 to n of, well, I'm going to put 1 into x and then 1 over n into y to get the sum from k equals 0 to n of n choose k times 1 to the power of anything is just 1, right? Especially for counting numbers, we can clearly see that. So I could say this is just 1 times 1 to the power of n minus k, which is just 1. And then when we multiply anything by 1, its value doesn't change. So I could just ignore that term. And, well, y is 1 over n, so you get 1 over n to the power of k. So that's what e is equal to. But then we can expand this further. n choose k is equal to n factorial over k factorial times n minus k factorial but we can simplify this further to end up with n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times dot 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 times n minus k plus 1 all over k factorial and so we can expand this out here so we've got the limit n tends to infinity of n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times all over k factorial times 1 over n to the power of k and now, what I'm going to do is switch over the denominators, and you'll see why in a second. n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times dot 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 times n minus k plus 1. And you can see here we've got k terms that I'm multiplying together here, right? Because this is the first, second, third. And then n minus k plus 1 can be written as n minus k minus 1, right? So I'm counting from... My, I'm counting from 0 to k minus 1, and if I'm starting my count at 0, being my first term, 1 being my second term, that means my k minus far, n minus k minus 1 would have to be my k term, right? So we have k terms on my numerator now, and since n to the power of k can be expanded to be n times n times n times n times n k times, by the definition of what a power is, We've got a correspondence for one term over one term, one term over one term, one term over one term, etc. But then all of this is multiplied by one over k factorial. This is the sum of k from k equals zero to n of this expression. Where say I've got a certain value n equals 10, for example, k would take every value from zero to 10, and then I'd add all those values together. Now, if n, let's say we've got n minus j, or even capital K where k is a constant and let that be all over n the limit as n tends to infinity of this is equal to the limit as n tends to infinity well this can be rewritten as one because that's what n over n is this means we've got the limit as n tends to infinity of one minus k over n k is a constant well capital k is a constant sorry and that means that as n gets larger and larger and larger, since k is a finite constant, k over n, well, I'm splitting, say I've got k equals 10, I'm splitting 10 into more and more and more pieces, which means each the value of each of my pieces is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. So the more and more divisions I'm splitting the, my k things into, the more, um, the larger my value of n, since k stays the same, the fraction as a whole becomes smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and this part 
tends to zero. And you can check this out on your calculator if you really want. Say you pick even k equals 2,500. And then say I let n be 10 to the power of 100, your calculator will probably return that as zero or 0 0.0000001. The bigger n gets, the closer k of n gets to zero. And that means this is equal to the limit as n tends to infinity of this is just 1 minus 0, which is 1. So the limit as n tends to infinity of n minus some constant k over n is equal to 1. As n tends to infinity, well, that's always 1 regardless. So you've got 1 times, well, n minus 1 over n, that just tends to 1. n minus 2 over n, as n tends to infinity, that tends to 1. n minus 3, and so on and so on and so on. And now since as n tends to infinity... We can just put capital K equals K minus 1, and then we end up with this just equals 1. This means that we've got N1s multiplied together, and then we multiply that to 1 over K factorial, and we find the sum from... But now, since I've already set N to 10 towards infinity, or s this means that instead of N now, I've got the sum to infinity, if that makes sense, because... I found the limit as n tends to infinity of these values. Well, the limit as n tends to infinity of n is given here. n is getting closer and closer to infinity. So, this is a sum. That means e is equal to the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of 1 over k factorial. And for the purposes of this video, I'm not going to worry about... And so, for the purposes of this video, I'm not going to worry about whether this series actually converges. So, assuming convergence, E is equal to the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of 1 over k factorial. And that could be our second definition of E. And this is what I'm going to focus on, and this is what makes E so useful in terms of things like differentiation. In my opinion, this is more beautiful than that.